You want to make a bit of money? You should do what I did. Get into farming. See this? I got this. Selling corn. Comes out of the f***ing ground. I couldn't believe it. I have long said that I absolutely hate farmers in Stellaris. And for that reason and that reason alone, I have set myself a special challenge, and that is to win the game, or at least play as much of the game as I can, whilst only having farmers producing my basic resources. Yes, we are doing a farmer only run. I don't know if it's even possible, but why don't you join me together as we play the Menjetian Collective, other race we're going to be taking today and attempting to do something rather interesting. That's right, you didn't miss here. I said only farmers. Now, what I mean by that is no miners, no technicians, only farmers for my basic resource output jobs. In order to achieve this and make it actually viable, we're gonna have to go with organic reprocessing. That's gonna mean we can turn food into alloys because we're going to have an overwhelming overabundance of food because I'm only going to run farmers. You can probably hear that this might be something of a personal challenge. I hate farmers in Stellaris. I generally try to remove them wherever possible. So today, only having farmers, it's going to be something of a personal pain. My heart is already bursting. We are going to be having some issues with research as well because we're going to find it hard to produce all of those additional minerals that we need to fund our researchers because we are a hive mind. To combat that, I'm going to go with natural neural network. That means I can turn unemployed drones into research production hubs. Otherwise, we're going to go with budding, aquatic, and traditional, just so we can squeeze as much as possible out of our initial colony worlds and hopefully get a head start over the competition. We're only using food, so it would make sense that, as food is the center point of our entire species, we're going with tree of life. Starting from the smallest sapling, we're going to nurture it, we're going to convert it into food, and maybe later on, bring in some other species to help with that whole food production issue. Totally moral, totally legitimate, but let's see if it's even possible to survive this in the early game. What do you think about this run through? Is farmers only actually viable? Let me know down in the comments below. These are the settings I'm going to be running today with if you'd like to play along at home. So here we have our beautiful capital, and as you can see, we have something of a problem. We do have lots of these agri drones, lots of farmers. Unfortunately, we also seem to have some technicians as well. There is something I can do about that though, and that is unemploy all the technicians and completely demolish their buildings. I wouldn't normally recommend you start a game by doing this. It's going to put us at something of a disadvantage. Because we are hungering for that food, I'm also going to be going for a hydroponics farm. That's going to help us get even more food because of course we'll need it, right? And technologies like geothermal fracking are going to be absolutely useless in this game because we won't be producing any mining output. Let's play for one month and see what shape our economy is in when the end of the month finally ticks over. I am expecting some terrible things. Right, so we're already going to be starting with a deficit of energy credits. That's all right. I can offset that by selling a little bit of food. So that's not too much of an issue, but we really are going to be struggling for minerals. Oof. In order to build my first colony ship, because we're tree of life, I'm going to have to save up a thousand food. Now that shouldn't be too much of an issue. However, as food is our main and primary resource, I'm having to sell quite a bit of my food production in order to get some basic resource output in terms of minerals and of course in terms of energy. There's a lot of things we might want as our first building on the capital. I can't build more mining districts. I can't build more generator districts. I, I really would like to build either of those. So instead, I'm gonna go with a sensorium site. What we lack in minerals and energy, we can make up for in the unity of our species. We've got the food now to build our first colony ship. Thank goodness, uh, Soil of Hope will be sent off. And then we can start using our next strategy that I've got in order to deal with the fact we've got basically very little mineral production. Synchronicity followed by instinctive synchronization is going to really help with our amenities on our capital. Synapse drones producing two extra amenities means that we can actually unemploy all of these maintenance drones and still have enough amenities left over to maintain positive stability. All of these unemployed drones are now producing a boatload of extra research for us. 
or at least the same amount of research as two employed researcher drones. So it's not massively efficient, no. Oof, eco simulation though, that's going to be really helpful at boosting the output of our food drones because we've got a whole boatload of farmers here. I'm currently running 18 farmers producing a whopping 132 food. This is very reminiscent of the old Shattered Ringworld start, which had a bunch of farmers on it. Our scientist here, Franz of Kharki, seems to have picked up a little straggler. Well, we could uh, dissect it, we could completely ignore it, but instead, we're just going to allow it to follow us. And of course, Adoptee has to be called the canonical Bubbles. Yeah, it's basically Bubbles or Death. Your, your choice, ladies and gentlemen. You, you, you don't choose Bubbles. That means galactic genocide's probably reasonable against you. Soil of Hope, our first planet is completed. We're going to immediately convert this over into an agri world because, of course, we need all of those farmers. It's a farmer only run, right? And then I'm going to turn on something rather interesting. I'm going to turn on planetary automation. This is going to mean that I can spend energy credits in order to build the buildings I need on Soil of Hope. And I really do hope that the first building it builds is the spawning pool. That's what I'm aiming at here. Darn it, it built an agriculture district. Well, we, we, we can only hope next time it gets it right. There goes the spawning pool, thankfully, because I do want to push up this pop assembly speed. At the moment, we're only getting a little bit of assembly from the various pops we've got on the planet. But what we really want is more. We're also selling a phenomenal amount of food every month just to balance the books and get some energy credits. The way I kind of reason this one is that we're not really selling it. What we're actually doing is simply burning it in order that we don't freeze to death on all of our planets. And that's the energy that we've got floating around here in the great Menjetian Collective. Alrighty, Star Root, our second colony. We're going to set that up as a forge world and immediately turn on planetary automation. We really do want to make sure we can get some buildings up on here without having to spend any of those minerals that are in such absolute short supply. I've just completed Prosperity. You see, I dipped into that after Synchronicity, and that means I've now got an Ascension perk slot available. At this point, I generally take Executive Vigor in order to guarantee some of those juicy additional edicts, but those edicts will absolutely not help me because I've got no technicians and no miners. So I think the only real choice then becomes One Vision or Technological Ascendancy. And in this case, I'm gonna go with One Vision for the juicy, juicy pop amenities usage reduction. It's 2215, we're only 15 years in and already, yeah, my mineral production is completely tanked. I've only got a little bit of minerals being used by the researchers across my empire. That's three research labs has completely bankrupted us. Ouch, I guess. <laughs> and if you're enjoying this video, please farm that like button. I really wish at this point that I could transfer food and uh, use that as a local stockpile to build buildings. That'd be very helpful for this specific challenge, though alas, I can only send energy or minerals. And I'm pretty much at the limit of how much I can sell every month selling 120. I might be able to get away with 130, but I don't want to risk it in case I'm wrong and the price of food starts spiraling out of control into nothing. That would completely crash my economy. We've encountered aliens on the southern border at Poru. This could be an issue. I think the AI is going to be much stronger than us at this point on Grand Admiral, no scaling. Let's switch over to a manufacturing focus. That's probably going to help us with some alloy output, although it has tanked our food income. But luckily, because we have no technicians and no mineral jobs, it's not hurt our mineral or energy income whatsoever. We can use that juicy extra 50 edict fund to switch on farming subsidies, the only real subsidy that's going to help us in this game. And that will be very nice indeed, giving us a big boost to food outcome, which we can definitely do something with, right? Um, yeah, it's food's just great, ladies and gentlemen. I, I love it, the food. Ooh wee. Ooh wee. Well, the Southern aliens could be anything, so best to grab some for investigation. That way we can know just a little bit more about them. Totally ethical, totally legitimate. By turning off everything except upgrade buildings on my capital and then turning automation on, I can actually use energy credits here to upgrade this Hive Nexus building, which I'm definitely going to do. Excellent. And that's going to mean that I haven't had to spend minerals, which I simply don't have in order to do that. Oh my goodness, we're now making so much food. Thank goodness for farmers, ladies and gentlemen. You know, they are the backbone of this economy. Oh, I'm dying on the inside just a little bit. 
I think we're going to definitely have to dip into supremacy here at year 22 just in order to survive, as the southern neighbours have turned out to be some hostile bottom-feeding troglodytes. The northerners have turned out to be uh, emissaries of the Shroud, no idea what that kind of nonsense is about, but let's see if we can convince them to send us a teacher. Unfortunately, they want cold hard cash and all we have is piles and piles and piles of food. Useless food that we can't use to build anything. Oh, good, good, good. The consolidated Jubaran colonies don't really seem to be very interested in talking to us. Let's see though, if they will buy our fantastic food in exchange for something like some energy credits. No, minus 1000 because they're suspicious. All right, how about if we give them some food to begin with, that, that, that could grease the wheels of diplomacy, as it were. We'll give them 4,000 food. I mean, it's not exactly like we're, we're, we're running out of food here, is it, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully they'll enjoy that. I mean, I should have noticed it. They're super suspicious. They're not even going to like us one little bit. Um, Let's do some spying then, I suppose. Xenophobic isolationists. Oh, goodness me. The one good thing we have going for us here is that it doesn't matter how many unemployed drones we create, they will produce a small amount of research and a bit of minerals in exchange for some food. And we have so much food. We're actually running out of space to store our food, so I'm going to do the unthinkable and I'm actually going to build a resource silo on purpose. We, we don't want to... This precious food, you know, our farmers have worked very, very hard, tirelessly, in fact, to bring us the food subsidies that we have enjoyed today. So it would be a real shame to throw away this precious, useful food. Heart of the Pulsar is exactly the kind of thing we need here. That's going to give us enough energy credits to finally get somewhere economically. Right, we've got plenty of alloys. What we're going to do now is we're going to commission a fleet with the shipyards we have at our disposal. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to work. Then, with that fleet, we'll attack the consolidated Jubaran colonies, I suppose. These xenophobic isolationist block. Yes, they've, they have uh, been aggressive towards us for the last time. I'm unironically going to be taking Grasp the Void here. That is going to allow us to build lots of extra star bases and we'll need those star bases as they will be pretty much the only thing that can have solar panels in order to supply energy for the fleets. You see, our population, the poor things, they simply don't know how to work any other job than these farming jobs. Yes, we have about, what's this? I think a third of our population currently is working in the fields toiling as farmers. And then we've got about a third of the population also just completely unemployed, idling, and thinking about the universe. What a time to be alive. And of course, none of these star bases would be complete without a hydroponics bay for all of that extra juicy food. Yeah, we've currently got 26,000 stockpiled here. Isn't that joyous? We've met a second alien race. These people don't seem to hate us so much. Let's try our luck now with uh, offering them some of this precious, precious food we've been saving up in exchange for their precious energy credits. Well, we're not getting a fantastic exchange rate here, uh, but it's much better than we would otherwise be able to get. So we are going to jump at this opportunity. Hopefully these silly rock people are going to give us exactly what we want. Oh my goodness, yes. And that's more energy credits. I love it when I win. We can also trade monthly food for energy credits with the Byzantian Commissariat as well. Oh, this is going to be very, very useful indeed. They've said, yes, let's wait for that first subsidy to flow into our coffers. And that stabilizes the economy. Huzzah. Huzzah! Claiming some systems from our southern neighbors, the consolidated Jubaran colonies here, will allow us to grab a big chunk of their space. And then once we've done that, we can then go further, hopefully, and push on into a subjugation after the fact. But either way, I built some fleets up. Let's just see if this will work. We're going to try out as well the brand new cybernetic tradition tree that is available to not just regular empires, but hive minds as well. We're going to embrace the weakness of our own flesh, our squidgy, organic, food-based, disgusting flesh. And then we're going to hopefully be able to assimilate other species as well into our collective. The Jubarans do seem to have some cruisers, but we outnumber them and we outmatch them in naval power. Hopefully, we'll still carry the day. The Fools also seem to have split their fleets up. We can use this to our advantage now, I hope. 
Yes, we'll catch this first fleet unawares here. Oh my goodness me. Actually, maybe we can catch them with... Oh, they've just completely retreated straight away. Absolute cowards. And then the other fleet has flown in after the first, but again, they've retreated in defeat. Definitely having some economic issues here. Minus 100 energy because we simply can't really produce any. I've done my best by trading with the AI and that sort of thing, and we do continually sell our alloys. This overall economic deficit has not stopped us from pushing forwards and hopefully we're going to win this war though our actual goals here are rather minor just a handful of systems and a few planets amongst them cybernetics definitely will herald the dawning of a new era here because we can now set the rights from being slaves for certain species meaning we'll be uh, consuming them as livestock however i don't really think we need much more livestock look at all of our food output here isn't it glorious <clears throat> Anyway, we can now move it into assimilation once we take the requisite perk and, oh, there's the requisite perk, transubstantiation synthesis. So we can now assimilate other species into our collective. And the first people we're going to help with this new technology is the Adnorans of Baron II. Baron is a small world here on the northeastern border of our empire and they would definitely benefit with some bling new upgrades on their otherwise boring fleshy heads. Let's demolish that mining district we've got on the world. We'll set up a sensorium site, that could be nice. Definitely throw in a couple of hive warrens, and then, oh, and then. Let's assimilate the Adnorans straight into our collective. Unfortunately, that trade deal we had with the Bazadian Commissariat has now timed out. Let's see what effect that will have on our economy. Uh-oh, our economy is in real trouble now. Okay. You see, as we are assimilating these Adnora, not only do they get cybernetic, but they also get hive-minded as well and delicious drones. So I think the only solution we've really got here, other than continually going around and begging people, selling them our food, which generally speaking has proved rather effective, the AI would like to buy lots and lots of our food, or at least some of it, but this kind of emergency resource transfer is by no means an effective method of governing an entire nation and guaranteeing budgetary surplus, especially when they say no to the darn trade deal. We are very close to getting the galactic market up and running that's either going to save us or it might completely damn our empire forever because it could simply crash the price of all of this food. We really need the energy credits, unfortunately our neighbor is no longer pathetic compared to us. We're going to have to build some more ships, push these numbers down just a little bit, and that way we can hopefully overtake them and then force them into becoming our tributary. At which point our energy credit crisis should be averted. Failing that, the galactic market, I assume is the answer to our prayers. We are a hive mind, but we definitely need to be doing a little bit of trading. Well, the subjugation play hasn't gone very well, I cannot seem to get ahead of the darn pop economic and technological power this empire has. We have almost double the fleet power, but apparently that simply will not be enough to convince them that they need to become our subjects. We are simply going to have to just conquer them instead. And that does mean the complete end of the consolidated Jubaran colonies. We are expanding. We're going to have to do a little bit of maintenance, unfortunately, because they've built some of the worst things in the universe, mining and generator district. I sadly have to completely get rid of them. It's, it is what it is. And for the robots we found, there's actually nothing I can do with them. I simply have to kind of get rid of them altogether. Oof, we have now run out of energy. That, that, that is an issue. Um, bit of a deficit there. Luckily, the galactic market now exists, although we no longer have enough food. Um, let's, let's just check on all of this stuff. A slight oversight on my part is that while, yes, it would be great to grab some of these additional traits here for our pops, who are now cybernetic, unfortunately, that really will not be happening because that would increase our energy credit upkeep and our energy credit income is still completely in the toilet. Thanks a lot, farmers even though we are trading for as many energy credits as we can get our little hands on. 
My southern neighbours, the Tebrid homolog, are a catalog index. That means they're driven assimilators. Now we're somewhat similar. We're a hive mind that is cybernetic and we are now ahem, driven to assimilate. For that reason, I think it could be rather, rather useful if we were to become their overlord. And we've actually managed to come up with a contract that the Tebrid homolog will agree to. Yes, they're now quite happy to take expansion permitted, independent diplomacy, a small research and quite a large alloy subsidy, along with defensive alliances, allowing me some holdings and unified sensors. Let's send that over to them. Let's put our fingers together and pray. Yes, here we are. We've now got a vassal. Amazing. Ooh, ooh next step in our five step plan. Well, you see the contract is going to start very, very nice for the Tebrid, but over time, it's going to um, change somewhat for these people. I think what we'd actually like to do is get a Ministry of Energy up and running over here. That could really, really help. And just as I predicted uh, so long ago, yes, it looks like the price of food has now completely crashed in the galactic market, rendering our economy, again, similar to a bowl that catches defecation. Let this be a warning as to why farmers are simply the absolute worst in this game. I think I'll quickly dip into diplomacy here because we're going to want to get a federation up and running. That way we can bring in the Bazadian Commissariat and do some sneaky little things with this lovely contract. All right, in just a few short months, all of this nonsense like giving away 80 alloys per month, oh my goodness me, that is heartbreaking to see, will be turned around and the driven assimilators will begin their own journey into a new type of assimilation. So I have dropped down the science uh, trade we've been doing. We're going to be getting enough energy now to actually fix the economy. That's going to be really, really helpful. It's possible, you know, it's possible we could actually do this. The crisis is just around the corner. Maybe. I mean, we are very low on ships, though. We've got lots of alloys, but we are very low on ships. Just what we need, a fallen empire has awoken on the other side of the galaxy. Well, luckily they're not directly next to us. Hopefully we can just kind of stay out of the conflict. So I really want a federation, but I really don't actually want this AI to be a nuisance in the federation. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to form a galactic union. It's going to be great. Um, I'm going to use all of these favors I've been collecting up and then you'll see hopefully what happens in just a moment. Yes, we've formed a federation, fantastic. We've met the curators. We are the federation president. Isn't it beautiful and brilliant? Lovely, now we've got uh, three members of the federation. Ourselves, the Manjetian Collective, the Byzantium Commissariat, and the Tebrid Homolog. But, oh and but, let's get to the end of the month and we'll see if the Byzantium Commissariat do actually want to remain in this federation. You see, they're now in a federation with a driven assimilator, not just one, but actually two because of our cybernetic ascension. And even if they don't decide to leave, well, what we can do is we can kick them from the federation in just a few moments. As now that we're in a federation, we can promise the entire universe to our little vassal here, who's going to be ever so grateful at what we're giving but none of these conflicts are even going to matter. It's just very, very juicy. Yes, this is a much better contract. I am much happier with this one. I've just noticed that this AI actually has fleets totaling around 80,000 in fleet power with a variety of, yes, somewhat mediocre looking battleships and cruisers, but still better to have on hand than nothing. Given that this pervasive Hythian Imperium is in a giant federation now spanning much of the known galaxy. Actually, I, I really hope the Sin Arbitrators do deal with them. We are never going to get another chance like this one. The Hythian Imperium, leader of the Star Strategic Alliance and overlord of four different vassal empires, a protectorate, a vassal, a vassal, and a bulwark, has lost a massive number of their fleets due to the action they've been taking in fighting a fanatic purifier to the north. We can now step in at this moment. Now is the time we can make them into our tributary, destroy this opposing federation and create a vassal swarm of our own. I hope we have the forces to actually fight this war. If we don't, it's going to go very badly. But at this point, I'm not sure really what else there is that we can do. Our little federation here really does need to push north. Otherwise, they completely envelop us on pretty much every side. 
And our Federation allies say, yes, we are now a go on Project Galaxy Capture. Well, the Hythian Imperium, they have a massive Federation fleet that we didn't really account for, 130,000 worth of it, plus some other ships too. Uh, yeah, they've got quite a lot of firepower. Hopefully everything will be fine. We're attempting to push through on the west and the east. That massive block that I talked about is on this eastern side, very close to a small number of our fleets. Oh, goodness me, are they advancing now? I think they're advancing. I think we might have to turn around at this point. If they're advancing, we we can't hold them back with our tiny little fleet here. We need to get out of there. I hope they don't jump through a Reshel here to Zarim. That would be catastrophic uh, for our overall war effort here. Well, my fingers are crossed. Everything, I'm sure it's going fine. We, we, we're doing great. Luckily, they don't seem to actually be interested in going that way. Great, they they might fall for the bait. We'll hit them at Mizam, maybe? Yes. Uh-oh, maybe I take it back. They're now pirouetting around the Reshel wormhole, which means some of them have come through to Zarim. This could spell the end for our little campaign here. Though on a positive note, we're now the uh, Manjetian Council main member of the Galactic Community. Pretty good going for us. Uh-oh. I hope they can't fly through the Alpha Refuge. That would be... Oh, that's really bad. Oh, no. Okay, so they can fly through the Sarandum Continuum here. That is definitely an issue. We're going to have to address that. How are we going to address that? Um, uh, yes. Oh, no. That, uh, that, that is really unfortunate for us. It looks like Baron is definitely going down. This could be a problem, right? They're now right on the edge of our space. We're trying to form up here in Maya, but I'm not sure if we'll have time. Oh, they, they seem to have slightly pulled back. I'm hopeful that our collective fleet power now out outmatches theirs. And for that reason, we're going to attempt to push the offensive. Their fleets are definitely somewhat spread out. I think we should be able to take out the main Federation fleet here if we can get there in time. All right, they're coming back. Oh, no, 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 no. We jumped in. We've, we've jumped in only piecemeal. This could be a massive problem. We need to make sure more fleet and more fleet are arriving. Thank goodness me. This is uh, this is quite the engagement, actually. We've taken out the big fleet almost. Yes, I think we're going to... We've won the day. We've won the day on the corner of our space. Let's just check it out here. Absolutely phenomenal. 103,000 damage. The combat in the Cervanti system, a decisive victory for us. We were going to chase after them instead. We're coming home to defend the space we're about to lose. Yes, we'd rather keep our uh, empire intact than not. It's a massive back and forth here. The northern area has kind of been letting them in and out here. We've got this wormhole down south in Galorum that became a bit of a problem. They actually reached as far north here as Crimdor, only a handful of jumps away from our capital. That would have been, yeah, that would have been really nasty. We have repulsed them, but this area, it's still an issue. The Zarin wormhole, which leads to Reshul, that's letting their fleets back and forth. However, the main bulk of enemy activity is still here in the north, and they are moving towards us in the Mirazam system. I'm hopeful that our combined forces here can actually defend against them. Hopeful. We, we've managed it once before. The odds weren't quite as stacked against us. I'm not even going to count how many ships they've got now. It just gets silly, doesn't it? It just gets silly. Our three little fleets here have been caught in something of... Something an aggressive move by the enemy. I'm not sure they're actually going to make it through. More fleets keep pouring into this system. Our ships are doing a valiant job of defending, but but where are the reinforcements? Oh, they're in the next system. All right, I take it back. We'll be fine. Okay, the life tree above Baron 2 has been killed. We're going to avenge that um, <clears throat> quite quickly, or maybe not actually. This is not going as well as I was hoping. Oh, our fleets do seem to be edging backwards, and they seem to be doing rather well. This is problematic. I mean, it's not a total loss, but it's not really a victory either. We've, uh, we, we knocked them about a bit, but we did lose an ungodly number of ships, I have to assume, during that engagement. Yeah, quite a few destroyers and cruisers and battleships. On the other side of the galaxy, though, we're about to enter orbit of their capital. With the fall of their capital, I don't believe it, but I think that oh, almost meant we had done it. We were so close, ladies and gentlemen. So very, very close. 
There we go. Now we can do it. We're going to achieve war goals here. That should completely change the makeup of the galaxy. Assuming the Federation says yes, and I really do hope they do agree that we should achieve war goals before we end up in an issue here where we can't actually... Darn it, international politics, you've done it again. <gasps> there we... There we go, though. That is it. Okay, right. How did we do? Are we where? I hope we are. Yes, we are. Beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. BEA, beautiful. We've achieved an overwhelming victory here over the enemy. I guess we'll put down some Tree of Life saplings everywhere in the galaxy. That'll really show them we mean business. And that basically makes us the most powerful nation in the galaxy because our collective now stretches across every part of space. The purple here is either our Federation members or indeed our vassals. Everyone's in a federation with us mainly because they are our vassal. I mean, at this point, yes, we do have some issues with energy credits, but overall, you know, we're, we're doing absolutely fine. We might defeat the crisis when it arrives, or we might not. If you'd like to see the continuation and completion of this timeline where we had absolutely no miners, absolutely no technicians, and more farmers than I could possibly ever fathom, I don't know how I'll sleep again after seeing all of that. Well, let me know down in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see another challenge video, perhaps where I try to research not a single technology during the entire game, click the video on screen now.